not welcome. Sorry about welcome that. Welcome to Hockey Week. That's okay. Um, I don't want to speak too much, um, but just as a quick introduction, I am an assistant professor here at the School of Medicine at the University of Pittsburgh. Um, and Jen and I have been um, talking for the past few months about Happy Feet, so we're very excited. So today I have Kara and Adeline here with me today, and they will be, we, all three of us will be guiding you for the next seven weeks through resistance training. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Adeline, who is my main exercise interventionist and exercise physiologist for my lab. Um, and she's going to give a brief, brief introduction as well. And then she'll be leading us through the assessments today and what to expect over the next seven weeks. So Adeline, if you want to go ahead and take over and share. Um, and then if you are um, a guest uh, and a viewer, if you could please mute your microphone um, so that we just don't get feedback from both because um, sometimes it'll make it hard for others to hear. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much for the introduction, Melanie. Hopefully everyone can hear me nice and loud. Um, like Melanie said, my name is Adeline. I am a researcher and health and fitness coordinator here at UPMC Hillman Cancer Building. Um, I work alongside Melanie and Kara, who is our clinical research coordinator in the lab here to hopefully better some research in cancer and exercise. Um, so like Melanie said this week and for the next six weeks, we'll be talking about resistance training. Um, this week is the first week, so it's gonna be more of an introduction to resistance training, why you should do resistance training, um, the benefits. Um, some of them Melanie may have talked about if you were with her on Sunday for her kickoff to Happy Feet. Um, but if not, this is a great reminder and um, We'll go ahead and get started with our presentation. So first, we're just going into the difference between aerobic exercise and resistance training. Aerobic exercise, you're using muscles that are in big muscle groups. Um, this increases your heart rate and the amount you breathe. So that's why sometimes aerobic exercise can feel a bit harder than um, maybe if you're lifting some weights. Some examples of these are walking, running, swimming, cycling, um, a lot of different activities where you're using most, if not all of your body, big muscle groups. Um, I know a lot of people that like Zumba too. That's also aerobic exercise and very fun. Um, but then there's also resistance training, which is what we're gonna be focusing on for the next six or seven weeks. Um, these are gonna be exercises where you are working against some sort of resistance, using your muscles to push something away or pull something towards you. Um, you can use dumbbells, resistance bands, which Jen should have given all of you. Um, and that's what we will be using for the next couple of weeks. But you can also use body weight exercises or some of you that may be more familiar with um, gym machines or exercise machines. Um, also something really important to keep in mind when you are doing any sort of exercise, whether it's aerobic exercise or resistance training, is the RPE scale that we have in the middle. It's basically a scale that um, helps you decide or decipher um, how hard an exercise is. So we usually use a scale of one to 10, one being maybe you're sitting on the couch or you're sitting in a chair, you're not really exerting any energy, and then 10 is you can't talk, you can't, you feel like you can't breathe. It's really, really hard. Um, when we're working in exercise, whether it's aerobic exercise or resistance training, we wanna kind of stay in that middle scale where it may be really a little bit difficult, but you're still able to consistently move through all the exercises. And why do we want to do resistance training? Um, some of you that may have seen Melanie's talk on Sunday may have seen this um, infographic on the left hand side. I love it. I think it does a great or shows a great example of what and why um, exercise helps for cancer related symptoms. Um, so a big one is cancer related fatigue over here on the left side. Um, most patients on cancer treatment and survivors of cancer, they report some sort of CRF cancer related fatigue um, and exercise really, really helps with that. And then on the right here, I have this benefits of exercise with cancer management. Um, that's for people that are ongoing treatment, currently in treatment. Um, it can help increase tolerance for cancer therapies. Um, once again, reduce that cancer related fatigue that you may be feeling post-treatment. Um, and then also 
big one is increased heart and lung function because a lot of chemotherapies can sometimes be toxic to your cardiovascular system and your heart and make it harder to breathe, harder to do aerobic exercise or resistance training. Um, but the more you build up that um, endurance and that strength, the easier it's going to get. Um, and is there only one way to do resistance training? Um, the answer to that is simply absolutely not. It is so different for everyone. Um, whether your neighbor is the same type of stage and same cancer as you, um, ongoing treatment, their exercise training or regimen may look completely different than yours. And you want to make sure that you choose the right type for you and your experience, which is also why we're here. Like we would love to guide you, um, answer all your questions about resistance training, exercise, all of the above. Um, that's what we're here for. And we want to make sure you guys know what you're doing, feel safe about exercising and that we can support you along the way. And with that being said, that is the end to our little introduction before we split out into, into some breakout groups. Um, so my breakout group is going to be completing our physical function assessments. Um, I believe Jen asked you to bring a chair with no arms, um, a dumbbell or a household item. Um, and I think that may be it. And maybe make sure you're wearing some comfortable shoes, comfortable clothes. Um, but we also have a poll that should be coming up in the next couple minutes about whether you'd be interested in coming to exercise in person with us. Um, meet us all in person at Cancer Bridges on September 26th. Um, this, I believe, is going to be our first week of resistance training to um, better your balance. So if you would feel safer coming to exercise in person, um, we are going to have that available and would love to hear from you guys from the poll. So actually, of course, today the poll is not working and not available. So what I would encourage everyone, like I said, I'm going to reiterate the question is that if you are interested in coming to exercise with the three of us on September 26th at Cancer Bridges in the Strip District, when you are assigned to your breakout room, and are with us one-on-one, -on -one, um, we will ask you and we will record your answer. Um, so just let us know uh, when you're in your breakout room. Perfect. Um, so just and to with that being that, said, there, I know some people can't travel to Cancer Bridges, so it would also be hybrid. Yes, yes, yes. We will still have the virtual option, um, whether you come in person or would rather stay online or can't make it to Cancer Bridges. And with that being said, we will go ahead and assign our breakout room so we can transition to, um, I'm gonna be doing the functional assessments. Like I said, Kara is going to be leading a discussion on SMART goals that you may or may not be familiar with um, and encouraging you all to write some of those down and maybe share some. Um, and then Melanie is going to be leading a discussion in exercise and um, safety. While we're waiting, does anyone have any questions or anything? You can either put it in the chat or um, raise your hand, unmute yourself. I think you, if, if somebody didn't, but wasn't there on Sunday. Um, I just wanted to let you know that they welcome any kind of questions. If you're having any kind of issues, you can put, I know some folks put questions in the private page and all three, well, yeah, all three of these uh, ladies are in the private page. Um, so if you, um, you know, you can ask the question in there, you can email them directly as well if, if you want there, or you can send it to me and I can send it to them.
Oh, I'm getting, or is everybody else getting the breakout room thing or is it just me? Forgot. <laughs> okay. So first of all, is my little window here blocking the PowerPoint? <laughs> no, I don't see it. Okay, it's perfect. Long. Okay, so has anyone ever used SMART goals before? Like maybe wave at me if you have, no? Okay, so are y'all new, new to it? Oh, so Virginia, you have? Cool, cool. Um, trying to get everything open at the same time. Okay, all right. So um, we wanna, so the Happy Feet private page is a great opportunity for us to be able to use SMART goals, but use them collaboratively so we can each give each other encouragement and all sorts of fun stuff like that. So tomorrow morning, I'm going to set up a thread on the Happy Feet private page that if you feel comfortable and you want to share your goals, you're more than welcome to. All right. All right. So what are SMART goals? So first, they're specific. They're focusing on improvement in a particular area or, um, or scale. They're also going to be measurable. You want to include some way to indicate, um, oops, sorry, or suggest progress. They're achievable, so they can be accomplished under the expected circumstances. They're relevant, meaning they're relevant to you. They're worthwhile and applicable. And they're time-bound. You have a deadline. All right. So that's, I mean, that tells you a lot, but I feel like it's, I always learn better from examples. So I came up with an example. So smart example. I am really awful at bringing my lunch to work. And I really, it would be great if I could do that. <laughs> I see some nods of agreement here. <laughs> so gotta bring my lunch. <laughs> so specific. I wanna pack and bring my lunch to work. Measurable. I want to succeed at this twice a week. We usually work from home one day a week, so I feel like twice a week, half the days, it's a good, good benchmark, good, uh, good leap from zero. Um, <laughs> so achievable. I'm an adult. I've got a kitchen. We've got a fridge here. I really should be able to do this. This is not outside of the realm of what I should be able to do. It's it should be achievable. <laughs> relevant. If I save money and I'm not going out and buying lunch every day, there is more money to spend on better things than lunch. <laughs> and time bound. So I want to try to make this a habit by the end of the month. So we will still be doing happy feet in a month. So I encourage you all to check back on, in on me and see if I have achieved my smart goal of bringing the lunch. <laughs> all right. So what about happy feet smart goals? So in Happy Feet, this, at least this session, we are focusing in on strength, endurance, and balance. So how about some examples of strength goals, endurance goals, and balance goals? So for strength, maybe just grocery shopping. Specific, be able to carry in your groceries on your own. And for measurable, so you want to think at baseline at the start of your goal, how hard is this for me now on a scale from zero to 10? If it's like a seven now, aim for it to be a five or aim, or if it's a three now, aim for it to be a one. Um, achievable um, with in the increased strength that we hope that you're gonna get from the resistance training, it should be easier. Relevant, it's regaining or improving your independence. And time bound, we're going to time bind, time bind it, sorry, <laughs> to the seven weeks of happy feet. Um, so does anyone else have any ideas of strength goals that they might want to share? You can feel free to unmute yourself and jump in. It is, it's hard to like... You know, come up with stuff on the spot. Right. Because I mean, obviously, I'd want to get stronger. I want to increase mm -hmm. my endurance and I want to increase my balance, but I don't know. I like by what, you know, like, like you're saying two times a week, like, 
like I guess maybe doing the exercises is that a goal or is it absolutely no doing the exercises that in itself is a great goal um and uh, so also I feel like maybe as we go a little further through the program we can all add things to that thread on the happy feet private page so because I feel like as we go through and you learn more about resistance training and you're you think more in terms of what it's going to help you with, you might be able to figure out things in your day-to-day -day life that are a little bit, it's, it'll be easier than just having to pull something out of the back of your head right now. <laughs> so I also have, oh, go ahead, Jen. I just said, okay. Okay. Um, and then an example for endurance, playing with your kids or your grandkids. So being able to play with them for longer. So as far as the measurable, how long can you play now without fatiguing? How much longer do you want to be able to play? With a bit more energy, it should be easier. And I mean, who doesn't want more time with the cute little folks, huh? <laughs> and again, the time bound, the seven weeks. And then an example for strength or for balance, excuse me, is being able to get out of bed with less difficulty. And again, I think that a good way to make this measurable is think on a 10 point scale, how hard is it now versus how hard would you like it to be? Um, or what do you think is achievable with the in improved balance um, in the seven weeks? And again, this is a, would be a big thing for regaining and improving independence. Um, so remember, we'll check back on the Happy Feet page or your private page tomorrow and you can share if you'd like. Um, we can all give each other some support. And uh, there is a section in um, Dr. Schmitz's book that talks about Happy Feet. It's page 51, 52. So if you wanna check that out, you're more than welcome to. <laughs> all right. So that is the end of the PowerPoint. So does anybody have any questions? Any thoughts or ideas of what you would want to potentially work towards or any 